everyone, it's Jessica here from Fox's Knits. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, as always, I am coming to you from Mungafai in Northland, New Zealand. And today I will be sharing with you a recently finished object, which is my balloon cardigan. And is extra special as I use some of my own natural dyed yarn to make this. So, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. This is a chatty knitting video podcast where I share my finished objects. I do a monthly video podcast as well as the occasional knitting know-how video. Remember that I include for you any show notes or links to what I've mentioned within this episode such as patterns or products in the description below. If you haven't already I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel and if you enjoy this video please give it a like. So the balloon cardigan, if you have been a regular here on my channel, you'll know that I have been wanting to make this pattern for ages. Uh, it's been on my list for a long time, so I'm really, really pleased to finally have this finished. As I mentioned, it is extra special as I use some of my own naturally dyed yarn for the base, and I'll explain a little bit about that later on. So... Uh, the pattern is by Danish designer Petite Knit and I have been trying to limit how many Petite Knit patterns I make as I have done quite a few. Uh, but I had bought this one so long ago, way before I even started this channel. So it was definitely time to get this onto my needles. It was literally burning a hole in my printing machine. <laughs> Now, I really love this pattern designer. Uh, the style of her garments are incredibly simple and classic, um, but they do allow you to adjust and edit to suit your own style. Uh, she has lots of really basic silhouettes, basic stitches, everything goes together really well, and knitting them can be quite rhythmic, so they're easy to get lost in, which I think is another reason why I like them so much. The pattern... This pattern in particular is the cardigan version of the balloon sweater, which I've also actually made a finished object video and I will um, link it. I'll link it above um, for you to have a look at if you're interested in that one. And although I wouldn't actually say that they are the same version, they have the same name and the same sleeves, but that's pretty much where the similarities finish. They are a similar silhouette, but the sweater, it... It has a drop shoulder with uh, more of a traditional style seam, and the cardigan, uh, the cardigan's a raglan version, uh, it's a raglan sleeve, and yeah, I'd love to have a go at making a cardigan version of the same, using the same shoulder method one day, but I think that she's done that because of the, um, the cuff, or the edging. So anyway, um, I do think I prefer her style of the sweater as opposed to the cardigan, but I love the cardigan. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of positive ease in this pattern. Uh, it's lovely and slouchy, which I am all about. It's also quite easy to adjust with the length of the sleeves and in the body should you need to, but of course that will affect your overall yarn meterage, which to me was actually quite a bit of an issue for this one. I played a serious, dangerous game of yarn chicken when I was making this. I really wasn't sure that I would have enough to even finish it. Um, so I'm really, really pleased that I did. In the end, I think I literally had about 30 centimeters left of the base yarn, which I was hoping to keep aside for sewing on um, the buttons and that kind of thing. So it was quite a stressful knit. And as I mentioned before, I had tried my hand at creating some naturally dyed yarn to use as the base and I did that with avocados and this was my first time that I had done this and it was really really fun. I love that you can get these light pink dusty tones or whatever tones you want. Uh, when dyeing with avocado uh, you get a huge variety of pinks from super super light pink like this to much darker and richer and it's I just think that's really amazing that you can do that with something that is essentially brown and green. So I will go into the dyeing method that I did in a little bit more detail in another video. So um, if you're subscribed, you'll know exactly when that's loaded because you're a clever cookie. Uh, and yeah, if you're interested in finding out more about that anyway, um, I don't know, you might not be. If you don't, if you're not, you don't have to watch it. Um, it was a really, really simple process, and I'm very, very keen to have a go at some more natural yarn dyeing. So, the base yarn that I used, um, I'll put in some footage from my last episode because I don't actually have any to show you, uh, was my favorite nude yarn from Wild Earth Yarns. This was their three ply 100% merino. It is an un 
dyed non superwash yarn that is really really soft and lovely and it makes a really good base for holding double I used for this two 100 gram skeins for this cardigan I believe each skein is about 530 meters I held this double with my favorite fluff which is Cumulus by Fiberspace you're sick of hearing me talking about it it's here it's beautiful if you use it you will know exactly what I'm talking about so this is a three ply lace weight yarn it is made of 74% baby suri alpaca 26% silk and I use the colorway blush uh, I used pretty I think I used six skeins of this and I'd actually originally purchased nine so I have quite a bit left but I'm really not mad about that it is beautiful and it's definitely something that I'll use up I have no idea how I misjudged that measurement because I did work it out the same way that I work out oh do you know what I probably actually bought a little bit extra just in case because I'm always paranoid I'm going to run out of yarn so for the cardigan it was the same gauge as the balloon sweater and as I was using the same combination of yarns that I did for that one I actually didn't gauge swatch for this which I do know is really really super slack and yeah but I was really confident that it would work out in the end and with the amount of positive ease in this pattern if it wasn't quite bang on I knew that I had quite a bit of wiggle room in there and from making that sweater version I knew that it would grow just a little bit not too much but I could stretch it out if I needed to and my gauge swatch for the balloon sweater was absolutely perfect totally bang on and I did it I did it properly as well and I actually blocked the swatch so I knew that it would be perfectly fine so I knit this uh, this cardigan rather on my Chiagu bamboo circulars and I used a four millimeter needle for the most part but I did switch to a three millimeter for the sleeves and the bottom uh, of the body ribbing so I'll just hop up to show you so just there if you can see that and the sleeve you can't see that um I'll show oh. I'll put some footage in. Uh, so the pattern actually didn't call for a switch to the needle size, but I just didn't get why you wouldn't do the ribbing a little bit snugger, um, especially as it often stretches out with blocking and wearing. So anyway, uh, modifications. So I didn't actually do too many for this one as I didn't have any extra yarn if I chose to make everything a little longer or anything a little bigger. And I actually thought that I would have plenty of yarn left over uh, for, because with the sweater version I didn't quite use two skeins but for this reason I don't know this sweater this this cardigan was really yarn hungry and um, it might have been that there was the ribbing further like the ribbing in the front I don't know if that kind of like when you're looping back through to do the it might use a bit more anyway like I said I had worked it out all properly so I was it was panic stations there for a little bit so for this pattern I chose to knit a size small as I mentioned I didn't um, extend the length of the body like I usually would but I did knit an extra two one or two centimeters on the sleeves just as they were feeling a little bit short and the only other modification that I did was um, in the sleeve I did a set of five decreases around the start so maybe like five or six rows apart um this was purely just to save some of the yarn and i knew that every stitch that i saved would you know would work out in the end and i'm really really glad that i did um i knew that i could afford to do a little nip and a tuck in there without compromising the style of the sleeves because the balloon um sweater was the sleeves were, were quite large and i knew that i'd still have that look even if i shaved a little bit off so I'm really really glad that I did because the extra bit that it gained um, I was able to use for an extra few rows in the bottom of the body which is really what I needed it for I did actually do one cheap modification where I didn't knit the buttonholes into the edging instead I ignored them the main reason was that I hadn't yet decided on the buttons and I wanted to have options so what I've actually done here was add some poppers instead so I have my fake buttons here and my poppers on the un underside so um, yeah 
I chose poppers to close the cardigan at the front. And I actually find that um, buttonholes knit directly into garments, especially something that's so soft and drapey, it stretches out of shape. And then you've ended up with these buttonholes that are absolutely massive and you can't close your thing properly or it just doesn't sit flat and sit right. Yeah, I think it sits, I think it just sits a little bit flatter. It just looks a little bit more polished. Anyway, so construction for this pattern is knit top down. And as I mentioned, this is a raglan sleeve. Um, I am not sure that I will knit too many more adult sized cardigans. There was, there was just way too much purling for really, really long rows. And um, I have mentioned in my monthly video podcast that my hands actually really, really felt that. Um, and as a designer working every day on a computer, so my day job, I'm a graphic and web designer. I work from home. I always have done. And I'm always using my mouse and for lots and lots of detailed work when doing design and laying out projects. So I already have to be quite careful um, at potential overuse. And as a result of that, this cardigan took me about three and a half weeks to complete. So a little longer than usual. When I was about halfway through the body, I actually moved onto the sleeves and finished those. Not only to save my hands because the sleeves in it in the round, but also to ensure that I had enough yarn to do the body. I did think that if I did have to dye some more, I would use what was left of the second skein that I had that was running out, and I could alternate that with the newer skein and the remainder of the body should I need to. I thought that was quite clever. Anyway, that's what I did. So techniques used in this pattern were obviously raglan increases, as you would expect, plus the invisible bind off, which um, you all know that I love, um, the Italian cast off method. There was some interesting construction around the neck band at the back of the neck and joining, and joining it um, to the front. And for that reason, I would say that this pattern would be an intermediate or very confident intermediate knitter pattern. To finish this cardigan, I did a full wet block so that I could get that proper size. As I mentioned, I knew it would stretch out a little bit. And I just needed to adjust the length in the body a little bit. And I used uh, buttons from our local uh, op shop or charity shop. So this is a lovely warm cardigan. Um, I've worn it all day today. I just have like a camisole type thing on underneath. And... Uh, it's probably the perfect weight for today. Um, I am hoping that we get a few more a few more cool days so I can wear it. Um, where I am in New Zealand, we've actually had the most mild winter and it's, um, it's, it's always quite warm where I live anyhow. And now that we're in spring, it's only going to get warmer. And yeah, like I said, I've worn this with a camisole, with jeans. It, um, it would go really well with skirts and dresses too. I'm just not really a dress kind of gal. Like I've got dresses and I like dresses, but I'm definitely jeans, sneakers, t-shirt kind of person. So what do you think? Do you think that you'll try this cardigan for yourself? Have you already made one? Let me know in the comments. I always love to hear from you um, and hear what you're up to. So thank you for being with me again today and for watching another one of my finished object episodes. If you've enjoyed this one, please make sure that you give it a like and be sure to check out and subscribe to my channel for the next Foxes Knits episode. See you again soon guys. Happy knitting.